Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Europa Universe House 4 as we are now playing with the Kingdom of Italy in the Emperor Expansion. So we did become Italy in the last episode. We also won that coalition war, uh, which was a pretty powerful coalition overall, you know, with France and Bohemia being members. And uh, this episode now is going to just be an episode of peace, guys. Uh, we need to spend some time to burn off our aggressive expansion and uh, also get our manpower back up because we're at zero manpower right now so not in a good position there uh, so we're going to try and avoid war but I wouldn't be surprised if we get pulled in by like an ally or something like that uh, but we do have money to spend if you guys remember we were trying to get that mission uh, which we needed a thousand ducats and now that we've done that we can now spend the, the money and we're going to go ahead and promote our artist here and make him a bit better uh, in fact Ooh, wow, he's really expensive to promote, to promote a second time. Uh, but you know what? I think we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, just to get the admin up a bit. And it's not like we don't have the money available. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. As far as other situations, do that. We have a fort here. Uh, let me just take a look. Yeah, we do have a fort here. So if we were to look at the fort situation here, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, uh, the reason why is because it's not being uh, paid for. Uh, so I think we're covering every province now with the exception of these two, and there might be one other one somewhere, but I think just these two are the only ones not being covered. As far as deleting forts, we could delete this one here, uh, but that would result in, like, I think it only actually result in one province not being covered as of right now. It does let people come in through here, though, I think. I'm not sure, though. They might need to go there first. Uh, I don't really know how the zone of control works because it does feel like they they violate it all the time. Uh, like I don't think this here was stopping anybody from continuing this way because we had a fort here. Uh, so yeah, I always wonder like exactly how the zone of control works. It, it's sometimes confusing, and they've changed it several times since they added that feature. So I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, but I always want to go and delete this fort here. I'm really tempted to. I mean, we're really good on money, so we don't have to. Having more forts is beneficial, I suppose, because, you know, it's more stuff people have to siege down and, and deal with. Oh, did we deal with our, our fleet yet? I don't think we did. Uh, let's go ahead and, and do that now. Uh, so we got those guys there. Let's see what we've got over here. This is these two. We want to merge, so we have a total of 24 galleys. And, of course, we're going to mothball those. And that should save us a bit of money. Uh, a little bit anyways. And uh, our fleet's really aren't that expensive because again they are galleys and then we also have that modifier now that makes the galleys even cheaper so you can see we probably didn't save very much money by mothballing yet we did add a ton of time to be able to use those once we go to war so i don't know maybe we don't want to mothball our galleys uh, i was thinking we wanted to do that because of uh you know obviously they uh obviously you know they, they cost us money and we're not using them so it seemed like it made sense but yeah maybe it doesn't uh they're just not costing us very much uh our fleet maintenance right now is only 1.13 anyways and yeah, we just don't spend much on the fleet that's that's interesting uh, but anyways let's go ahead and, and get this light ship out there i forgot we had gotten this this is one of the ones we had captured uh so let's go ahead and send them on a mission here we're gonna have them do the protect trade and we will have them do oh do we have that fleet still out there doing the uh the pirate hunting i'm not entirely sure because if you guys recall we lost some ships out there uh, so i'm not sure if we still have them i want to say we don't it looks like the only fleet we have right now is this one right here which is protecting trade in genoa so i almost want to go ahead and and split off some of these because I think we lost the ones that were also protecting trade over there. So yeah, let's go ahead and split these guys off, guys. This is a lot of ships over here. Uh, so what we need to do, I don't know if we can... Yeah, we might not be able to do this because they're on a mission. So we would have to cancel their mission. And then we'll uh, create a new fleet. And we still can't create the fleet. Maybe because they're moving? Yeah, looks like we're, we're waiting for them to finish moving. So that's what the problem is. Uh, so let's go ahead and move some of these ships out. Oh, it looks like these guys haven't been upgraded either. And yeah, we got like a ton of ships that still need to be upgraded. Okay, I didn't even think about doing that. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably want to go ahead and do that first. Uh, let's go ahead and put them into put them in here because they'll repair quicker. They might as well take care of all this, guys. Uh, so we want to detach any obsolete uh, ships. So we had the nine uh, ships that didn't need to get upgraded, and the one we captured, and that gives us ten here, uh, which is I think is a good number. Let's go ahead and 
do protect trade again in Genoa, though it does say that we are actually at a loss here because of the maintenance. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're just not earning very much. But, you know, what? I feel like we still, even if it's not, uh, even if we're, we're not, you know, getting money from it, I feel like having more trade power here is important. It, it is surprising, though, that we are losing so much money there. All right, well, it's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spend it anyway. Just make sure that we have, you know, as much trade power as we can get here because this is where we're bringing all that trade. So it seems like I'm actually a little bit surprised that it's not worth more. Uh, so we need to go ahead and upgrade these. Uh, this will be a little bit of money. It's okay. It'll take a bit of time to repair up. And uh, when they're done repairing, we'll send them, we'll send them back out. Uh, we can do the government reform now. Uh, so let's see what the next category is. It does seem that it is absolutism and, con and constitutionalism. So we have to choose one of these two here. Uh, so we're probably going to go with this one. Yeah, I think that's the one we're going to go for, guys. Yeah. Because we are the state. Uh, so we'll get that one. That gives us a massive amount of governing capacity, which I want to say we actually have quite a bit. Um, it looks like we were kind of getting close to the government capacity. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, going to help us out a lot. Yeah, but it looks like we were actually... Yeah, we were about to hit it, in fact. Uh, actually, we might have already been over it before that. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, 250... Uh, that would put us at 400. So yeah, we were probably already over governing capacity. Okay, interesting. I wonder what what effect that was having. Uh, but yeah, somebody told me that you see the the governing capacity, like how much it's costing you here in the building screen. So that's where that is. I was wondering where it was. It's right here. Uh, so you can see exactly how much we're getting here. Uh, it does seem to be based entirely off of development. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, one development gives uh, requires one point of governing capacity okay it seemed like it wasn't working that way before because we looked at our our uh, our development it seemed like it was lower than the the government capacity uh but whatever uh trade league has been disbanded league of genoa is disbanded okay uh and then we can invest in new technology the diplomatic tech uh this would be you know a bit more expensive than necessary and we're really only getting the brig ship out of this and you know a slight increase in trade efficiency so it's really not worth the pay the extra power uh, we'll wait till it gets a little bit cheaper. Uh, so let's go ahead and do... Oh, Lord, I guess we'll lose the 50 diplomatic power. Just I want to keep the prestige up. And, you know, we have an excess of diplomatic power. With not much to do with it other than to, you know, we could change cultures here if we wanted to. But again, I don't typically, I don't do that very often. I try to avoid doing it. I prefer to put into development. Simply because, again, I, I talked about this. I don't really find the, the culture conversions to be very realistic uh you know we can also increase our military tech now uh that would give us new cannons which would be nice but again we're not at war right now so let's just keep it uh we'll just wait uh this would allow us to get um some innovativeness of course we're at 30.9 now so we're getting it up there uh but yeah i just don't find it very realistic uh i talked about this with somebody in the comments uh, a couple videos ago uh, last time I brought it up, it looks like Spain did win as the papal controller. That's unfortunate. Uh, we are now starting to get papacy points. Oh, yes, I forgot to deal with the HRE. We'll have to deal with that now. Uh, profiteering and Luca. Okay, uh, so let's do protecting our trade. And uh, let's go ahead and, and, and deal with the HRE situation. So I am going to leave the HRE. You know, I just didn't want to deal with it in, in this one because I'm just not interested in... Uh, and getting involved in Germany, frankly. Uh, what I really want to do, you know, we, after we conquer Naples, which is our next objective, uh, is to conquer Naples. And uh, could also extend out here. Genoa would be a good option, too. Uh, but I do think that they would be supported. And I think they'd end up getting supported by the Austrians because I believe they are in the HRE. Uh, so I mean, we could double check that. Yeah, they are in the HRE. So. If we uh, declared war on them, we'd probably have you know issues with Austria. Uh, so that's that's one thing I'd like to do. The other thing is going to Naples, and then of course, then I think we're going to have issues with Spain. Uh, but but I, I could see us going into the Balkans and North Africa after that. I do not want to get involved in Germany, and you know we'd have to constantly like uh, support the Germans when somebody declares war on them around the outside. So we're going to end up having to fight Denmark. We're going to have to fight France. Um, I don't know who else we might get involved with, but we'll probably get heavily involved in Germany, way more so than I want to, if we were to become 
uh, the Emperor. It's just not one of the goals here for, for this campaign. I, I didn't really want to get involved in the HRE too much. And, you know, there was already a lot of people who were doing that. Oh, and that was keeping us from being a king, too. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that it had turned us, but, yeah, when we went back into the HRE, we did lose our level 3 rank. So let's go and upgrade again. So, yeah, we got that back, so that's nice. Uh, I didn't even realize that it had downgraded our rank. I forgot that you cannot be a, a level 3 rank, I think with a few exceptions. Uh, and so this does result in us getting this back, uh, since the Pope is in the Empire, and uh, we are not. Uh, so that's going to be a continued problem. Not really much way to avoid that, though, if we don't want to be in the HRE. Uh, this is the bull that the Spanish picked. And we do... I think it did pull all of our provinces out. Yeah, it did pull all of our provinces out. Excellent. We do want to change our capital, though. I know that this is going to result in that one penalty again. I do not want to make... I just do not want Rome to be our capital. Like, I'd prefer... Yeah, I just I don't have very much desire to have this be our capital here, guys. Uh, I mean, Milan we built up. It has those, that really good modifier here, the capital of Italy. Uh, I would just prefer that this is our, our capital province, is, you know, the largest province in, in all of Italy. It would take us forever to, to build this uh, Rome back up to the size of, of Milan. I would really prefer this to be our capital. Uh, we got all these uh, good bonuses here. I don't know, though. Uh, we also have the improved fortifications. I forgot about that. Uh, so, yeah, I would really like this to be the capital. Um, but that would result in us getting that penalty, I think. I have to look that up. I'll wait to change this to see if that's the thing that's keeping us from getting the penalty with the Papal States is that this is because this is our capital. We could also just give Rome up, too. Give it back to the Papal States. I wouldn't actually entirely oppose that. Uh, having having uh, the Pope here and completely surrounded by us. Uh, better than having them be in Germany. Plus, if we move them here, uh, then that might pull them out of the HRE, though. They'd have to change their capital over, of course. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it'd be one option. Uh, I'm trying to see... Uh, oh, it's up here. It'd be 201 admin power. So we'll wait to change our capital, but I am considering doing so, guys. Honestly, I think it'd be better uh, to, to change the capital over. And... They change to a republic. Okay. Naples is a serene republic now. Now they got a doge. All right, I'm not entirely sure what happened with that. Uh, so we got a heresy event. So we can gain an inquisitor. Or we can poison the bishop's lunch next time. And that would piss off the church. Okay, let's just do this one. Although our artist would die, wouldn't he? Oh, okay. I didn't realize that, uh, that part of it. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, with that in mind, we'll just have to do this one. We didn't really lose 20 Papal Influence because we only had 7. Uh, we can't invest in Admin Tech now. Uh, it's, it's all starting to get cheaper. We're not at max or anything, so there's really no reason to do it now. And I knew we were going to end up getting called into a damn war because of the Austrians. Uh, so that's unfortunate. These truces have all end. And, oh, it's the religious. The religious wars. Oops, my bad. Uh, yeah, I think it might be these uh, religious wars here. So this should end up being a, a extremely large conflict. And because they declared war in Austria, we would have to support them. Oh, Lord. Okay, so who all are we going to war with, man? And we got, like, no manpower. Let's just take a look. A lot of countries, essentially. But most of them are in the north here, so we might not get that involved. Uh, who's in the Catholic League? I guess that's what's important here to see. Okay, so Scotland would actually be helping out. There's not a lot of countries over there. There's Spain, though, so... We shouldn't have to get too involved. So let's go ahead and accept it. It's uh, unfortunate. And we'll have to just... I want to keep these guys drilling. So we're just going to have to pay attention and look for enemy armies. Uh, the Council of Trent has ended. Okay. Um, did that change anything over here? Hmm, I don't think so. Alright, uh, what is this? You can invest in me. Okay, we're about to lose that uh, bonus here. Uh, how long do we have? Uh, it says 83 days left. Yeah, we can wait another year so it gets a bit cheaper. Yeah, we'll do that. I think it's always like at the end of January when you hit February 1st. I think that's when that ends so that you can, so you can do that and get it when it's cheaper. Uh, so let's see what all happened over here. Peasants War. And uh, somebody got a Golden Air. Well, we have not gotten any points here. 
we have still not fulfilled a single objective here. Uh, so, again, there's not really anything to uh, fulfill that I can see. Yeah, uh, we're just not gonna be able to get it. This is just not our, this is not our age. I think the next age we shall uh, be able to get our golden air. Uh, so yeah, we wanted to do this at the end of end of January. And then we'll uh, go ahead and put it into military tech, make sure we get that innovativeness. Uh, and again, I'm trying to, to watch here, make sure we don't have any enemy armies that come in here, because I'm not gonna help out. We don't have any manpower to be helping out, which shit like that, man. Uh, so we just won't. We do have too many diplomatic relations. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, oh shit, I, I missed it. Damn it. I missed the ability to get the, uh, oh, that's a shame. All right, well, uh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. I was over here looking at enemy armies and shit. So I suppose there's no reason not to wait another year before we invest in any of these then get them a bit cheaper. Uh, Cause I don't think we're gonna get any innovativeness. Yeah, we won't get any innovativeness. So there's really no reason to rush it. Uh, I mean, you get some bonuses of course from this. Uh, you know, obviously our artillery is what's gonna get significantly better, but we're not fighting. So uh, here, 2% trade efficiency. Man, I don't think that's yeah, and the 2% production efficiency is gonna make a big difference. Uh, we are getting some mercantilism, which is nice. Oh yes, we have money. Let's go ahead and spend this shit. Uh, oh yeah, and we also have these ships here, which I completely, completely forgot about. Uh, and I assume all of our ships are probably trying to... Oh, it doesn't look like we do have them set them to do that. Okay. Uh, but they might be going back inside. So what we wanna do with uh, these ships that we have here, uh, these four ships, we're gonna split two of them off. Actually, we might be able to do this with just one of these. We'll see if this is enough. So we're gonna use this one here to do the uh, hunt pirate mission here in Genoa so that hopefully they'll stop raiding us. Uh, so they'll work on that for us. And then these three here will go to one of those other uh, trade zones here. Uh, so let me just see if we can patrol Alexandria yet without getting any supply issues. It looks like we can reach there. Okay, uh, so we could probably uh, do Alexandria if that's the most profitable, which it does seem to be the most profitable. So yeah, let's do it there. And then hopefully it doesn't have any issues. I'll watch them. I don't think enemy armies will come down here. Uh, you know what, we're probably paying for fortifications and I suppose we'll pay for these ones up here in the north, uh, but I don't, I don't wanna pay for all this. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop paying for some of these. Yeah, let's just, we'll pay for these two up here. Uh, that will stop anybody from coming in. Uh, and then also, we do have an enemy fleet right there. Uh, it's a small fleet though. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to watch these guys to make sure they don't take attrition. I'm a little bit worried that they're gonna take attrition. And it doesn't seem like they should, yeah, okay. So we do have full supply there, excellent. So that should earn us some good money. Um, and we did fulfill a mission, which one? Uh, let me just take a look at, uh, we got prosperity for all. At least eight owned provinces must have prosperity. All right, excellent. Uh, so this is gonna give us uh, 20 years of Italian prosperity, which is gonna give us a negative 10% development cost and plus 25% stability cost. Okay, excellent. Uh, the next one here, which I said I was gonna look at these missions, uh, and I'll try to do it before the end of the episode. I didn't want to make a little bit of progress here. We have been going kind of slow. I've been talking too much. Uh, at least five owned provinces in Southern Italy must have at least 25 development. Okay. Uh, do we have any? Uh, I guess we don't own any provinces in Southern Italy. Yeah. Uh, we, we still are at the center. The other missions here are the Alpine defenses, which is just building fortifications up there. Uh, so essentially, this one doesn't count. So we need more fortifications. All right, well, that's a shame. I feel like we're gonna have to build, you know what, I think that one is actually counting. I don't know, it's hard to say if that one's counting or not. Uh, but yeah, we need to build another castle, even if we just want to delete it. Uh, we could build another castle just temporarily and then delete it afterwards, just so we can fulfill this objective and go down it. Uh, so we'll do that here with our money now. And then we have this one, all provinces owned in Italy, so we have to, yeah, we'd have to conquer, but it'd take a little while to get that done. This only really gives permanent claims here. Okay, uh, but some of those are areas we might not have permanent claims yet. And as you expect, this does require us to go start conquering in Africa, so that's not gonna be happening anytime soon. Uh, so let's go ahead and let that play. Yes, that's right, we're gonna build a fort. Uh, so let's go and build a fort. I'm trying to see where the best place uh, to build one. I guess we'll just build it here. Again, I'm probably just gonna delete it. 
so let's go and build this. I'm regretting <laughs> deleting that one though. Uh, I mean, I guess we built it a long time ago. I suppose that, that's a lot of money we earned by not having it. Oh, wait a minute. We still got a lot of money left. Uh, let's go ahead and, and spend some of it then. Uh, let's get ourselves... We'll, we'll take a look at workshops and see if there's anything here that's that's worth it. Uh, workshop there, I suppose, would be worth it, so we'll build one. Uh, we'll take a look at the church and see if there's anything here that's... Yeah, not really. How about some manpower? Since we did run out of manpower. None that would earn a significant amount, so... Yeah, we won't get that. Could always get uh, more land force limit. I don't think we're actually at our force limit, though. How about local trade power? Is there anyone that we can get significant trade power from? Uh, you get a little bit on the side here. It's, it's not much. It is starting to increase, though. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Uh, I suppose we could go with the uh, manufacturing. And again, we'd want to build it and you know based on the trade goods rather than so much the money, although the money is kind of heavily dependent on the actual trade good. I suppose we could do here for the salt one. Yeah, we'll do that one. And we'll take the majority of our money there. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying before, uh, with the culture, is the fact that, you know, there's very few examples of culture changing in the early modern period. It was happening here and there, but in those places it did happen. It was something that took decades, if not hundreds of years, and it was a natural change. It just kind of happened naturally. It wasn't the result of like rulers forcing that change. Uh, there are some cases of rulers attempting to force a change of culture uh, in the early modern period, but none of them were successful, not a single one. Uh, there are certainly examples of uh, rulers moving certain cultures to certain places. You know, that did result in uh, the culture changing a bit, but again, it wasn't, uh, it was, they were still a minority. So the province culture was never changing. And of course I am excluding um, the Americas because that's the one exception, uh, the one exception to that happening, which of course is already represented in the game without culture change because, uh, you know, as soon as you settle somewhere, as soon as you settle somewhere, they uh, are, are your culture. Uh, let's go ahead and get these, all three of these. And get all these knocked out. That does change up the uh, one of our ship designs. Also, we do need to change up uh, the artillery uh, so we can go with large cast or small cast. Uh, so the difference here that I'm seeing is the large cast has offensive fire, while the small cast does not. Instead, they have offensive morale. And then these guys have defensive morale. Okay, I see. So it's either defensive shock or defensive morale, offensive morale or offensive fire. So we're gonna want to, we're gonna do more casualties here. That's what I'd like to do, more casualties. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's the only example really of any province in this time period, like really changing culture, like full change of culture, as in not uh, minorities like increasing in numbers. Because uh, there's certainly some of that, for sure. There's a lot of movement around of cultures and, and whatnot. But as far as, like, changing the culture of a province over from one to another, just, there's not really, there's no examples in the early modern period outside of a, a colonization of the Americas, where, obviously, there was very much cultural change uh, in this area here. Uh, but again, that's already represented without the cultural change mechanic. Uh, that is represented because as soon as you colonize a province, it is your culture. Uh, so we did lose our ships out here. Damn it. I was trying not to have to have our ships out here. Uh, but yes, they did. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Let me take that back. We sunk some of their ships. Okay, I see. Uh, so I just misread that. Uh, yeah, they, so they lost two of their ships. All right, good. I thought we had lost our ships, uh, having them out here by themselves. Uh, so let's go ahead and have uh, these guys upgrade real quick. We do have to unmoth bomb, though. So let's go ahead and upgrade them. We'll let them get back up to like 30% here. Uh, but again, just there's no examples of that culture change. It just it doesn't make any sense. Um, it's not something I think you change cultures. What is it? A couple of years? Let's go moth these all these guys now. Uh, just about, I was curious here to look at this. How quickly you change culture to? Uh, 160 months here. 130 months. So it does take a little bit longer um, than a couple of years. Uh, I guess it's about 10 years or so. Uh, but you can change that apparently. Yeah, you can change uh, how long it takes. But yeah, it does take, uh, some of those took about 10 years or so, uh, some a little bit longer, 12 years or so, uh, so about a decade. Uh, but again, that, that's 
still, even if it's not a couple years, as I said before, it's it's not at all accurate. Hmm. I ignore their demands. And they will be unhappy for a little while, but we'll get rid of that pretty quickly, I think. Uh, let's just take a look and see how our aggressive expansion is going, because remember, that's what we're, we're trying to do right now. We're trying to burn this off. Uh, looks like we still have quite a bit, uh, so let's keep on burning off. It's only been uh, about three years uh, since we started the episode, so... I guess it's not really all that surprising that we haven't burned off much. Uh, we did lose one of our generals, so that means he's not going to be able to continue training the army. Let's just see where he was at. He was down here, so let's go and get a new one, because again, I do want to keep all these armies training. And he is decent. Uh, he's got very high maneuver and very good siege. Okay, so we'll go ahead and place him and continue drilling. Just see if anybody needs is able to stop drilling. I don't think so. We got pretty low there because that war kind of took a while. Just trying to get our manpower back up again and just kind of paying attention to where the enemy armies are. Because uh, I'm trying to avoid this conflict. I have no interest in getting involved uh, just because of our low manpower. You know, if they come and attack us, we'll defend our territory. Uh, but yeah, we just have to keep our eyes on them because if they start coming down here, which there's some big, big armies over here. Yeah, very large armies. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of, like, uh, provinces discovered, so that's nice. Yeah, we're really starting to see a lot more of the world now. Seeing what everybody's doing. And, and big takeaway here is that the English have taken over almost the entire coastline here in Brazil. Very right, interesting. Uh, no colonization this far down after the yep, Spanish are still up here. And a little bit of colonization around here. And you see Scotland is colonizing. I was wondering why we could see Scotland's territory. I completely forgot that yeah, we are in this war and they are involved as well. So it's interesting that Scotland is, is doing a bit of colonization. They're also dealing with a serious rebellion right now too. Uh, yeah, pretty bad rebellion by Protestants. Okay, uh, so don't have that modifier anymore. Uh, we have more money. Let's go and spend it. Uh, and did we mothball these guys again? Yeah, we did. Uh, you can see they're mothballed there. Uh, so let's go and spend some more money, get some more buildings constructed, I suppose. Uh, see what we got available, what would make uh, for a good choice here. We already looked at this. I don't think there's anything, uh, but we might be able to build a church right there. If you remember, we built the, uh, the workshop last time. Uh, so maybe the church, ah, it's not really going to earn much money, honestly. Let's just keep on doing manufactories. Uh, these have, you know, earn us. Again, they do take a long time to earn their money back, but they do have some other benefits as well since they increase the, the production of that good. Uh, so let's just see what we might want to increase. Uh, probably cloth. You know, those are the most profitable. Yeah, I guess we'll do, uh, do the cloth. Uh, we already control the goods there, the trade there. It looks like we lost this conflict. Yeah, defeat. And that says right there. Alright, so as far as like total casualties on their side, we can only see their, the casualties of this one country. I don't know, I can't see the rest. Um, 153,000 uh, 153, total casualties here. That's a lot. Now, that doesn't result in this ending. Not yet, because uh, there's still going to need to be more wars on this. Uh, so, we have not joined a side yet but on... Uh, you know, in regards to, you know, Catholic or Protestants yet. Uh, what we need to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and, why are these guys stopped drilling? Oh, they must have stopped drilling for the conflict, didn't they? Damn it. Uh, I didn't know that turned it off. Uh, so now let's go ahead and, and mothball all our, all our forts again. All right. I think that's the only thing we need to adjust there. It looks like beaver prices are probably going up right now. Oh, wait a minute, the war's not over. Okay, they just pieced out with one country. I got it. I see. I was confused there. I was wondering why it only showed the... Yeah, so we don't want to mop all, all of our forts then. My bad. I wasn't paying attention. I was wondering why the hell there was only one country involved in that peace treaty. That's why. It was just one country making a separate peace. Got it. I understand now. All right, so let's go ahead and keep these two, uh, uh, you know, again, until, until we see somebody coming down here, we'll keep them training. Try to make sure that we get that drill as high as we possibly can and continue to increase our professionalism, which is currently sitting in almost at 50%. We're getting there uh, with all these these units drilling at the same time here. As far as force limit go, we actually have room in the force limit if we wanted to build some more ships there. We can even build some more galleys as well. Uh, the reason why I haven't built a flagship yet, I suppose we could build a flagship, uh, though they wouldn't be, they would be a, I think they're considered a heavy ship. Uh, so. 
Could always build one, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, why not? Let's go ahead and build a flagship. We have the money, so we'll build one here. Oh, you can pick what kind of... Uh, I've never done this before. Uh, so you can actually pick what kind of flagship flagship you want. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't know why you would want to do light ship. I guess just to get extra trade power stuff. Oh, um, yeah, let's do a galley. Yeah, I had no... Yeah, I, I didn't even know that you could do the uh, uh, the galley instead of a heavy ship. I thought it had to be a heavy ship. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, let's go ahead and think of a name here. I kind of want it to be the Sforza. Oh, yeah, let's just name it the Sforza. Alright, so we'll name it that. Now we need to pick uh, three upgrades for it. Well, we'll probably want to add the cannons. I'm looking at other options. And then you could do this one if you're doing a light ship. You know, and that's how you could get quite a bit more trade power. Uh, if you if you did a light ship instead. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing that. You could do fleet morale. That would help. Fleet engagement with. That'd be nice for, a, you know, when you have a large fleet. Uh, they do all increase the maintenance, though, of the flagship. Okay. Uh, so if you wanted a cheaper ship, you could have less stuff, I suppose. I don't know why you'd want to do that, though. Since the flagship, you can only have one flagship. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to have all three uh, modifiers on it. Uh, fleet movement speed. Uh, fleet block paid impact on siege. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's be more useful during sieges. Uh, durability. I think we're going to do something that actually helps our fleet, though. Uh, make sure that we can seize control of the seas. Movement speed on and off ships. Okay, so that'd be good for, like, transport. Uh, monthly chance of admiral skill gain on missions. Okay. Uh, fleet privateering efficiency and fleet naval tradition for battles. Okay, so we're going to do ones that, you know, make our fleet better. So we're going to do the flagship cannons. Uh, we'll do the, the fleet morale. And then we'll do the uh, flagship durability. So this just makes the uh, flagship more durable so they don't sink it. And that, that just gives it more cannons. This is the only one that's actually going to help the fleet, so that's something to consider. Uh, yeah, I guess this is what we'll do. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and build the Sforza. I'm just looking at other modifiers here. Uh, can you change... Can you, like, upgrade the flagship? Uh, I would assume you could, but... I guess we'll see. Because, uh, again, this is the first time I really messed around with this uh, at all. I have not really played around with the flagships. Uh, oh, you know, I just... I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the episode. I just bought that, that DLC uh, for this series. Uh, so I'd never had it before. I did get to play around with the, the beta uh, a little bit. Uh, I got to play with the, the beta before that DLC came out. The Spanish DLC came out. So this is just another peace treaty here with our enemies. Just one of our enemies. Uh, we are actually losing this conflict right now. Uh, but at least we're piecing some countries out. Uh, we did get the Alpine defense done now that we built that fortification. So that allows us to complete this, gain those those claims. Uh, and then, of course, uh, most importantly, unlock the next two missions here. Uh, so let's take a look at what these ones are. So all provinces... Oh, okay. So we'd have to conquer over this way in order to complete this one. Um, this one here would also require us to conquer for the territory. You have to conquer all down here. Oh, you got to con conquer the entire coastline there of the Adriatic Sea in order to complete this. And it's pretty much just giving you claims. Just really, it seems like they're... Their mission tree is all about uh, expanding and giving you more claims to expand. Man, I, I don't know. I, I don't really like the missions that give claims. I know they're permanent claims, but like it's so easy to get a claim in this game. Like it's incredibly easy to get a claim in this game. It's not hard. Uh, so and you don't even have to really invest much either. So I, I really prefer other things from missions, honestly. Uh, so we have piece somebody else out. Uh, so what the hell was I looking at? There's something I wanted to do, and I don't remember. Oh yes, I was gonna spend. I was gonna go ahead and get some buildings uh, constructed. Uh, but let's go ahead and first get some more war galleys, I think, or we could do more trade ships. We did lose trade ships. I suppose it makes sense to get more trade ships. Yeah, let's go and get more trade ships in. We're going to get uh, a couple more. Uh, we'll do two more trade ships here, and that'll get us up to our naval cap. Uh, we could also build more units uh, and get them up to like 25,000, but yeah, I don't really see any point because, again, we do have to avoid war for a little while. 
Uh, we still haven't got aggressive expansion up, and as far as our manpower goes, we're, we're at a third of our, our maximum manpower, so we still got a lot of, uh, you know, rebuilding and peace to go. Uh, Scotland has peaced out. Okay. Doesn't look like they are involved in the war much, but yet they still gave territory over. All right. Interesting. So these guys are now free. All right. So uh, I'm not sure why if they, they didn't... Maybe just because they were dealing with rebellions. Uh, but yeah, if they didn't take any casualties, it's kind of strange that they'd give stuff up. Circulation of hostile publications. So we can see the time for censorship has come. Uh, we lose some support for printing press. And they would get uh, local unrest modifier. Or you can say we can't control the free word and we get some support. Uh, and that's one we will do. Yeah, we'll do that. As far as how we're looking on institutions. We still have a lot of provinces for that to spread to before we're going to be able to adopt it. Uh, I think it's pretty expensive considering the fact that we've had quite a bit of money and it still hasn't popped up as an option to buy it. It's at 816 right now is the cost, you know, because frankly it's just not in very many of our provinces. So we won't uh, save up for that. Let's just go ahead and get more buildings going. Because I did say I was going to build these and then I didn't. Uh, so we're going to go and get another manufactory uh, and then of course we'll get it here in that cloth province. Uh, but again, I was talking about the culture, and uh, yeah, there's just no no historical examples of that in this time period. Uh, there are historical examples outside of the time period, but yeah, just none here. And even so, it's still more of a natural change, not really so much a government thing. Okay, so Austria peace somebody out. A lot of enemies getting very, very close here, guys. A lot of enemies that are getting quite close to us. I am a little bit worried that they're going to start entering into our territory soon. I mean, any of these guys could come and evade us. So I am a bit concerned. Our merchant is bankrupt. Okay, we'll just do that one. Uh, and, and if they did enter our territory, again, the problem here would be that our armies are drilling. Uh, and Venice has adopted the printing press. Uh, but yeah, if they, they attacked in here, they, our, our troops here would likely die. Uh, well, those truces have ended from the coalition. Um, I, I don't know if we still have a coalition against us. I, I didn't see anything about them leaving the coalition, so we might. Let's just take a look. It does seem... Where is it? I, I could have swear there was a coalition thing here. Maybe there's not a coalition against us right now. Yeah, apparently not. Okay, I was thinking that we still had that coalition. Uh, but yeah, I guess when you beat it, the coalition disbands. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, so now they're able to enter in a coalition again, since the uh, peace treaty has expired. So we could end up seeing another coalition rise up against us. I don't know if we burned off enough aggressive expansion or not. I guess I guess we'll see. Uh, so Austria's peace somebody else out. Uh, as of right now, they're the only ones that have joined that coalition because they do have a lot of aggressive expansion with us. 98, Switzerland has joined, Naples has joined. I expect these guys have quite a bit of aggressive expansion too, yeah. Quite a bit, guys. Uh, we did get another Cardinal, uh, so that puts us at eight, and yeah, uh, the coalition's gonna be a problem again, guys. All right, uh, so we'll see if they end up declaring war or not. Again, we're just trying to burn off that damn uh, aggressive expansion. What we could do is put another one in to try and uh, help appease outraged countries. I don't know if that'll be enough, though. We'll see. We'll see if we can't get them out of the coalition. Hey, I thought we had burned off a lot more aggressive expansion than we had. Uh, we have not burned off much, apparently. Uh, and it does look like we got another one out. Another country out. And this is resulting in a lot of changes, because I have seen that they've been a lot of countries have been forced to give like cores back and give provinces up. Uh, so there's been a lot of changes from this conflict overall uh, within Germany. Again, we haven't really been paying attention to the conflict at all, as I don't frankly care as long as I don't come on my borders, my borders here. I don't really care what happens in Germany, though. I suppose I would prefer that the Catholics win, obviously. Uh, but again, our problem here is manpower. I feel like until we, if we had manpower maxed out, I would go help out. Um, but with our current situation, I don't see any reason for getting involved. No reason at all. Uh, and we did get the trading in glass bonus uh, again. Nice. I think we had that before, and then we, we lost it. 
Uh, we could always take a look at the ledger here and just see how things are looking for the strategic goods. Uh, so it's just, we'll look at our market share here. Oops, keep forgetting that changes it. So yeah, we have 21% of the market share of wine, 20% of, of glass. Uh, we're starting to get up there on paper as well, and cloth. We're trying to get up there. We're already the you know production leader for both cloth and paper. Uh, I think that's it though. Uh, there was one we were trying to work on, it was wine. And we were getting close, but France is still the leading producer, unfortunately. Uh, as far as other ones that we might be able to get, salt. You know, we're at 3.5% of 8.3. I don't think we'll get that. Grain is another one we're probably too far off from getting. Yeah. We might be able to get cattle. Maybe we should build our next... Yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. I think we have a cattle province. Uh, so maybe we'll build the next one of our manufacturers on that cattle province as soon as we hit the 480. We have actually several cattle provinces. We might be able to get it, guys. Uh, what about the paper one? Where were we at in that regard? Uh, let's just take a look. God damn it. Uh, let's see where we're at on the paper, if this is worth going for. Oh, we're already the production leader for paper, that's right. Yeah, we will go after the cattle. We'll try and see if we can't get that. I think it's a possibility we might be able to get the production leader for that. Uh, we did lose our commandant, uh, which, remember, he was a cheaper one. Uh, so we'll have to get another guy who's likely going to cost us quite a bit of money, unfortunately. This is the only guy who's level 3. We could just use our money to... He would have to be of our culture, though. You know, we could just get like the land maintenance modifier guy and that help make our army cheaper. We are spending quite a bit of money on our army. 33 ducats, over 33 ducats per month. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and get uh, the land maintenance guy, Grand Captain. And then we'll just have to like improve his abilities here. And uh, I'd love to get him up a higher level. Before, remember, we couldn't increase past three. Uh, that wasn't really an option because the the, the advisor we had uh, was a female and she was not of our culture so therefore we could not uh, promote her but yeah i'd like to promote him up to level five i think uh, again we have the money for it so i don't see why we wouldn't uh and ah oh, all right so our king got uh, a negative modifier which is a shame uh, I would really like to abdicate, and I think we can because we've been ruling for 20 years. Normally you can't do it until you're 60, but you can also do it if you've been ruling for 20 years. There are some penalties to it. Uh, obviously that's another one that doesn't really make a whole lot of historical sense. Uh, rulers abdicated, uh, but very rarely did they abdicate uh, unless they were forced to or unless there's like some kind of serious issues in their country, usually rebellions, and they thought abdication would ensure that their heir would uh, succeed. That's what happened, uh, but it didn't just happen just because you, the reason why we do it here in the game is because we don't like our ruler and we want to get our, our heir. Uh, so it's kind of gamey, but whatever. Uh, there's a lot of gamey stuff in this, I suppose. Uh, so some more peace. It does look like we're starting to turn it around our side uh, while they still have the war score uh, You know, we've pieced out a lot of their countries uh, But they still have a, quite a few. Uh, they're still involved here Okay Just Keep following it Passively uh, not getting involved. I wonder how much manpower they got left not much Because remember they are involved in that big war with us, uh, you know helping else out right before they had this big war uh, we did lose our admiral. That's okay. If we get into actual war, then maybe we'll get another one. Uh, so we're gonna lose money, or get the plague here, and that affects you for three years. You do get autonomy as well. You know, we're swimming in money. It's fine. The autonomy takes a long time to burn off. I don't know if it's worth it doing that, but that is what we did. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I like the, the new expansion. Uh, I feel like they definitely made some improvements. Still, some of the issues are, are still here that were always kind of here that bugged me. And you know, there are also issues that I didn't expect to be fixed. Uh, this is five years and it's just increased cost. That's fine, we'll pay the extra cost for five years. Our port is blockaded. Which port? Okay, apparently we own this. The only thing I can think is that uh, Venice came up here and took it for us. Uh, so yeah, we actually own that province. Well, let's go and give it to somebody else. Because uh, yeah, I don't really have any interest in owning that. Let's see who we want to give it to. Who is on our side, I guess. Uh, I suppose that would be the best way to look at this. Could give it to them. They're on our side. Sure, why not? 
Uh, so it's going to change the occupation. I never remember how to do this because I don't do it very often. How often do you change it? It's right here. So let me see if I can maybe give it to them. I'm not seeing that as an option. I think they're in here. I just got to find them. Oh, here they go. All right, so we'll go ahead and let them occupy that. They already have the, the province below it, so it makes sense to give them to them. There's no reason for us to occupy it. Uh, and of course we keep getting that declining power of the nobility. I don't know if there's any triggers that affect that or if it just if you just get it for whatever reason. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any triggers for it. I think it just kind of happens to represent, you know, that in many countries the nobles their power was declining. Not in all countries, of course. I think we talked about that earlier in the series. We talked about how in Poland that was definitely not the case. And of course that did end up resulting in Poland having some serious issues. Um, you know, they, they became much more powerful there. Uh, the nobles in France actually became more powerful in a sense. They became, you know, subjugated to the king, of course. Uh, so the king did have way more power over them uh, as as we progressed in the early modern period. However, they did get a lot more power over the, the peasants overall. Uh, peasants continued to have issues in France. Uh, though, of course, there was uh, in the end of serfdom in this period. All right, so they did end up giving one of those provinces away. Uh, and then they gave another one away as well. Okay, so they have increased their strength, and we continue to get victories in this conflict. Uh, and see, uh, see, it kind of it's probably coming to end soon, I would think. But yeah, this this war is going to devastate all of them. Uh, and our and one of our generals did increase his maneuver from drilling. All right, fantastic. Just take a look at our drill and see if there's anybody we want to stop. Uh, if anybody's hit 100, we'll let this guy hit 100. He's almost there. Um, same with this guy here. We'll let him hit 100. Uh, so we'll wear, wear a Protestant League has brought another one of the enemies out. Uh, so, and, and, and this is all earning like stupid amounts of money for Austria because they have forced almost all of them to give money. Spain wants an alliance. I'm not super interested in allying with Spain because I know that we're going to have to conquer their territory here. However, having them help out against Naples, I mean, I guess we don't really need it. Naples is weak. Yeah, I don't think that allying with, well, I guess they would help with uh, France. Uh, we could ally with them for like just a temporary time here since they are the enemy of our enemy we could always pull out later and they are allied with austria so that's something to consider i wonder the hungarians who are they now allied with oh okay so they're allied with bohemia and naples uh so they are a, a future enemy so having somebody strong around this area who could help us out would be useful uh, but it doesn't look like there's anybody we could ally with. It's just the Austrians. Uh, but they are already allied with the Austrians. All right. I'm just trying to think, see who we could help have help us with the Hungarians. I guess Spain would be a good ally, so we'll accept that. Since we kind of have some, some enemies here. Uh, enemies that used to be former uh, for, former allies. Uh, we still have the royal marriage with the Hungarians. Uh, we are now importing iron, uh, so and and all this is causing us problems up here with our diplomacy as well. I think we are over the cap a little bit, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we could annex uh, the Venetians if we wanted to. I kind of like keeping them around though. I like having their their fleet here. Uh, it's nice to have, but yeah, we eventually we're gonna want to annex them. Uh, so we we like this event here. We've been getting the military power, but I think for right now we're gonna go with the mercantilism. I'm trying to increase mercantilism. It's been slowly increasing. Uh, from those events, and we're now at 18 percent. Uh, so I typically like feel that by the the 1600s you need to be in the 20 something percents with the mercantilism. And so we're starting to get there. We were really falling behind there. I don't know if that's why those events started popping up because we we're kind of low on there. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go and embrace uh, the printing press. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, again, we're not going to be able to use it to get any text just yet because it's still kind of expensive. I think we will go ahead and get this one, you know, even with the higher cost, just so we can get the new idea uh, group. I'm not sure what we're going to go for just yet. Uh, we're, you know, we're kind of stacked on all of them. I guess we can look at our next heir because, again, once this war is over, I'd really like to, to, to you know, see if we can't get our heir as the king. I don't know what the cost of that's going to be. I assume some legitimacy. I don't remember exactly what the cost, but I think there is some legitimacy cost to it. I wonder if we can get out of this war, because uh, I'm, I'm not really interested in being involved. We don't have any diplomats, so we do need to pull these guys back, since they're not even doing anything any damn way. Uh, so yeah, let me just see if we can't can't get out of this conflict, because I, I know we'll get a, a separate peace penalty, but 
I mean, I'm, I'm not helping out, nor am I really interested in helping out. Uh, I just want to burn off aggressive expansions so, we, so that we can attack the uh, to attack Naples or Genoa. Uh, so they would not accept a white piece. They're about negative 11 away. Uh, we could probably give them something and they'd be willing to accept it, but I'm not super interested in giving them anything, honestly. All right, well, they don't want a white piece. They don't want a white piece. It's fine. Uh, but it's such a bummer we kind of got dragged into this conflict. I knew that was going to end up happening, though, so it's not its not surprising. Uh, we could increase relations here with the Venetians. Uh, they don't even like us. Yeah, I suppose we'll do that. Let's improve relations with them. Make them like us a bit more. And how are we doing on money? We're still doing great. Still earning a lot of money per month. Uh, we're about to end this episode here soon. And this war might just end on its own as well, because we have continued to peace out, but those have been like little countries each. But you can see that we vastly outnumber them now. That is counting our troops, though, and we're not helping in the war, so... I mean, we have uh, 39,000 infantry you'd have to take from that. Uh, but still, overall, we are definitely uh, outnumbering them, and it does look like we are going to win this, as you guys can kind of see here. Uh, you know, the Hungarians are having issues. Uh, and let's see what this event is about, what the options are. Okay, I think, yeah, we've seen this one. Yes, I do remember. Uh, this one here. Good God, it's so expensive, man. Because, again, it's based off of your income. So I hate these events. There's so many events that are kind of based off your income, and it just gets, like, a stupid amounts of money uh, that you're required to do anything uh, on these. All right, well, let's go ahead, because, again, it's based off of how much your total income is. Uh, so let's not do... That one, that's for sure. I suppose we can do this one. Nobles will get a little bit irritated, but yeah, we'll do that one. I don't care if they get irritated. Uh, we can get up to 999, so we are going to hit that cap. So we do need to start uh, putting our admin power into something. I suppose we can build up Rome a little bit. Uh, although, you know what? Actually, I don't know if I want to do that, because if we give it back to the Papal States, then that would be bad. So we should probably build up somewhere else. Uh, we can finally get up them up to... Uh, uh, 50 development, though, probably better to just give it to one of these two. And I suppose we are kind of getting high up on those ones as well. Yeah, I guess we'll do the uh, base production. Why not? It gets them up to 50 there. Uh, and then let's see where we want to spend this admin power here. Uh, you know, it's going to be a province that... Uh, we'll do this one. We'll do Florence. Uh, they're at 33 development right now. We could do Genoa as well. Uh, these ones are kind of more expensive. Uh, but, again, I like getting these... Higher level provinces here. Higher uh, developments. We'll be able to get more buildings constructed there. Again, I don't want to put any points into to, uh, Roma because I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. It's all based on that triggered modifier. I could have sworn there's a way to check triggered modifiers. I think it's down here, actually. You know what? We might be able to look at that now. The occupation of Rome. So we don't have it. Oh, it's just Italy that doesn't get it. It has nothing to do with the capital. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that at all then. So that means we can go ahead and move our capital. Uh, well, let's do that now, because I want it to be in Milan, but we can't do that in war. Damn it. This war is stopping me from doing everything I want to do. Uh, so yeah, I really hope we can get out of it soon. Uh, the Hungarians have made peace. Well, that's not good. It does reduce our total uh, uh, negative war score here, since that's largely what it, we're getting it from. So the Hungarians had had so much land conquered. Uh, but that is a more powerful country here. But I guess that lets free Spain up to go other places. So maybe we'll end the war soon. Uh, let's go ahead and do... I just don't know that we'll be able to get... Let me see what's invested so far. We'll try. We'll invest a little bit. Just the basic amount. Just so that we have like a chance of getting in here. You know, maybe if we can keep it at like 10-15% chance. Uh, and then we'll, from there we'll just spend the rest of the points on other, other things. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to see if we can't get peace real quick. Uh, we don't have any diplomats. That's right. Uh, so we're going to need to... Pull from the outraged countries, because we weren't even doing anything with that diplomat. And then we will uh, try this peace out and see if they're willing to accept it. Uh, they would be willing to accept a peace offer. Okay, uh, we just want to do a white peace. Uh, I don't think they would be willing to give us anything. Nah, because we didn't do anything. So yeah, so give them a white peace. I'm not in, interested in being involved in this conflict, like, at all. That allow us to do two things that I wanted to do. One, change our capital back to Milan, which is exactly... Uh, what I wanted to do here. So yeah, that's fantastic. We got our capital back over to this way. We can go in and get rid of that fort again, just to kind of save us a little bit of money, and I will. Uh, again, I, I feel like we should have the fort up here. 
Uh, we did complete that objectives. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason to keep that fort around. It costs us money. I, I know that keeping it here in the mountains does have its benefits. Uh, anybody who attacks down here, which a lot of our enemies have attacked through this way, would have to siege that fort before they could move on, and then we'd have that nice uh, plus two. But I'm, I'm still trying to, to do that here. That's the goal is to conquer that Swiss territory, and that is currently our objective here with the estates and we don't have much more time to get this done so we need to do it soon again the problem is the aggressive expansion we have started to really burn it off though uh, so I think we're just about ready for a conflict we're always gonna have high aggressive expansion with these guys uh, we could go after Naples instead uh, again let me see we have no diplomats so we gotta wait until we get this diplomat back so let's do the things we wanted to do war was stopping us from doing so you lose 20 legitimacy and 50 prestige. Good God. Okay, that's pretty bad. But again, look at the, the stats here, guys. Uh, we're moving from uh, a king with five total stats to a king with nine. Uh, so that's a big deal. Plus, he's got a negative trait as well. Uh, and his positive ones aren't helping us much. So yeah, I would prefer to have our heir take over when he's young so he can go ahead and start having he can get his own heir and yeah, I think this would be best man 50 prestige is a huge huge hit uh, look at all those modifiers that are gonna be halved uh, so that's a big deal uh, but you know what guys it'll be ticking up though uh, because of our, all of our you know positive prestige modifiers so you know what guys I think I think we're gonna do this let's do it uh, it's costly uh, I did lose uh, stability. I didn't even notice that you lost a stability point, but yeah, I feel like this. Oh, because he's a new ruler. That's right. Uh, so yeah, we have a new king. We'll have to get a new consort. Um, if we don't have any royal marriages with anybody, well, maybe we want to go ahead and do that now uh, with any countries that we're currently allied with. Uh, let me just see which countries we don't. I'm trying to look at our diplomacy here. Uh, so let's go to diplomacy and see what countries we don't have royal marriages with. It looks like we still have a royal marriage with everybody. So they sent us the royal marriage offers rather than us send it to them. So that means that we won't be able to do another royal marriage. All right, well, that's fine. I was kind of hoping to, to do that so that we could get, you know, we wouldn't have the local one. Uh, but that's fine. We already have the local wife. And that gave us an heir who is actually pretty decent, a little above average. And we will call him. I mean, we haven't had a Francisco. Let's do a, a Ferdinando. Yeah, let's have him Fernando here. Um, and that also gave us our our consort. And she is good. Yeah, she's she's pretty decent. Uh, so yeah, we got a good strong uh, claim uh, for our heir. Uh, the the heir is, is decent. Um, I think he's technically, yeah, he's better than his father is and more balanced as well. Uh, we should also get the new personality next month. So we'll see what that is real quick before we end this episode. Uh, and the war of religion was over, and the empire has ended in total, or the war of religion in the empire has ended in total victory for the emperor, and the imperial parliament has convened in a diet to proclaim Catholicism as the sole confessional faith of the Holy Roman Empire. Electors who follow a different confession will be stripped of their privileges, and the emperor has given broad authority to enforce Catholic unity within the empire. Uh, so very, very good. The Catholics won exactly what we wanted to see here have happened. Uh, despite us not even helping them out at all. Uh, so, so yeah, this was uh, overall went quite well uh, for the Austrians, and I'm, I'm happy with the way that it went. And I don't know what else they got out of this. Looks like uh, the Danes have been weakened some. Uh, Savoy has converted to Protestant. Okay, um, well, that's not good. It's going to impact our relations with them by a bit. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they, they converted. Just taking a look at, yeah, they are hardcore Protestant. Were they forced to change to Protestantism? I don't think so. I don't think they lost anything over there. Uh, but yeah, you can see that. Ooh, what's this? Oh, look at that. The Teutonic Order is having some problems with a heresy. Um, so yeah, they've, uh, I was surprised to see that. That red on the, uh, this is just so much red. Just looking at uh, the rest of the religions here. And yeah, it seems that uh, Protestantism is, is definitely spread quite a bit uh, throughout Germany uh, and the Low Countries, uh, but that's pretty much it. A little bit here in uh, Brittany. Of course, the uh, English have gone with their Anglican, which we already knew about. Uh, but I, I think the, it looks like, yeah, they've all been forced to convert, I think. 
Yeah, because all their provinces are still Protestant, uh, but they are now Catholic. So I don't know if they were forced to convert uh, Sweden and, and the Danes. That's what it seems like, though. I didn't really look at the, the peace treaty, but yeah, it did seem like they are now forced to be Catholic. Uh, so that's interesting. And you'll see a lot of other uh, Protestant countries through here are also now been forced to be Catholic. Uh, so we'll have to see if they remain Catholic and, and they start converting their stuff. And maybe this could be the death of Protestantism. I don't know. Especially with it becoming the dominant religion of the HRE. Uh, we'll just have to kind of follow along see what happens there. Uh, let's go ahead and now that we're out of this war, I, there was one other thing I forgot to do. I forgot the mothball. All the fleets, or all the uh, uh, fortifications. So we're going to do that now. Uh, so... This is where we are going to end the episode. Uh, we'll take a look and see how we're doing on drill. We might want to go and end drilling. If they're at 100. Yeah, they are at 100, so we'll end drilling here. And end drilling here, which means we can now stop paying for our, our army as well. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.